Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In this quick hit, the Beatles are offered money to perform on Saturday Night Live. Did it almost happen? Also, we'll talk about the urban legend surrounding the classic film The Wizard of Oz. Stay with us. You're listening to a 3324 podcast quick hit with Dean Legiro, where Dean shares stories and trivia about his favorite chart hits, actors, movies, and more. Welcome, friends, to this 3324 quick hit. My name is Dean. Thank you for joining me. You can find us on social media at 3324 Podcast. That'll be on Instagram and Facebook and at 3324P on Twitter. We also have full-length episodes that come out every Thursday featuring the music and movies that shaped our lives, so please join us there as well. For this first story, we're going to go back to 1976, and we're going to visit the TV show Saturday Night Live. At the time, it had a cult following, as it had only debuted a, a couple of months before in October of 1975. Not what we know it to be now, with it, it this beloved TV show and treasured for all their musical performances and all the great hosts and all the great cast members that have come through. Uh, it was still something very small. So referencing specifically the April 24th episode in 1976, producer Lorne Michaels has a spot and he's offering the Beatles money to reform. And at the time, there were a lot of offers being thrown around multi, multi millions of dollars for the Fab Four to come together and perform or record again. So Saturday Night Live, not one to miss an opportunity put their hat into the ring, and they were able to make an offer for the Beatles to reform as well. They had a check for $3,000 that they were prepared to offer the Beatles to put, play three songs on their show, any songs of their choosing. As well, they can divide up the money however they wanted, whatever split they were going to give. If they wanted to give Ringo a little less, they can do that. Whatever they want, they can decide that. Now, the curious thing about this, as laughable as the offer was, is the urban legend part. The legend goes that John Lennon and Paul McCartney were in New York at the time watching the show and considering going down and collecting the money and, and reforming and getting that $3,000. Part of that, or most of it, is actually true. That's the legend is that they were there at the time when the show was on and we're going to go down. Paul McCartney would later reveal that, yes, they did see an episode of Saturday Night Live, did consider going down, but it wasn't that episode. It was actually a week later when Paul was visiting John Lennon at his apartment in the Dakota and thought, wow, this would be kind of a goof. Let's let's go down and do this. But since Saturday Night Live doesn't start till 1130, it would be late and they were kind of tired as they were just kind of having an off day and, and didn't feel like it, pulling it together and going down there. So they actually did not end up reuniting on Saturday Night Live. May 22nd episode of SNL, Lorne Michaels would up the offer to $3,200, adding an extra $50 per Beatle to sweeten the pot a little bit to get them to reunite. The interesting thing is that in November of 1976, George Harrison appeared as a musical guest on the show and tried to collect the $3,000 as he was a Beatle and he was appearing. But the $3,000 was for all four Beatles. So since there was only one Beatle, they would have to divide it in four and they would gladly give George Harrison $750. George Harrison thought that was a little bit chintzy and a little bit uh, below what was expected. So Lorne Michaels was able to offer George Harrison an extra $250 on top if he would do the opening line live from New York at Saturday night, which George Harrison gladly did. So it looks like he may have picked up $1,000 for that. So one of music history's greatest what-if stories John Lennon and Paul McCartney in New York watching a TV show ready to go down to perform would absolutely make music history, but alas, not something that would come to pass. Next up, we're going to talk about the classic movie, The Wizard of Oz. Was somebody killed on set? We'll talk about that next.
Let's talk about the Wizard of Oz and the urban legends surrounding whether or not someone actually killed themselves on the set and whether or not that actually made it into the film. Uh, another one of these wild urban legends. And since this movie came out in 1939, as of the recording of, of this episode, that movie's 82 years old. So this could be one of the earliest urban legends that goes far back. And, and Wizard of Oz is a classic among classics. It's beloved by people of all ages around the world. I don't think anybody's gone through their childhood without seeing The Wizard of Oz and its star-making performance from Judy Garland and all the wonderful songs over the rainbow and lions and tigers and bears and all that great stuff. The production did have its share of troubles, though. It went through up to four directors. Actors were replaced. Uh, the, the original Tin Man was replaced because he had a, an, an allergic reaction to the makeup, and that was Buddy Epson, and he was replaced. Uh, the original witch was replaced as well. Plenty of accidents on set. So it's, it makes sense that, that maybe there's some truth to this legend that with all that going on, that maybe somebody did kill themselves. Uh, you can see it if you want to look for yourself and watch the film. It's at the end of the Tin Woodsman scene. And if you look almost dead center way in the background, you can see something, something kind of mysterious and out of the ordinary happening. But what the urban legend is, is that one of the little people who played the munchkins was forlorn and, and rejected by, by a fellow actor, uh, and he decided to take his life, and it was captured on film. Really what happened is that during the production of The Wizard of Oz, uh, they wanted a, a really a lifelike feel to the woods and all those scenes, so they had borrowed some birds from the L.A. Zoo uh, of all different shapes and sizes. There's a peacock that's visible in one of the scenes, so they wanted that wildlife added to the, to the set to give it a little bit more realism. Officially, the word is, is that what you see is not actually someone ending their own life, but it is one of the large cranes that was on set in the background, actually expanding its wings, and you're catching the shadow of that. So we're going to leave you to decide that for yourself. Did somebody really kill themselves? Or was it a really large bird spreading its wings and being captured on film that way. Either way, The Wizard of Oz is, is a great watch. There's a lot of great background stories about the making of the film if you're interested in it. It's a wonder that this film got made when it did with everything that went on. But uh, this one, I think we can put to rest. It is a crane spreading its wings in shadow, not somebody ending their own life. Thank you for joining me for this quick hit. My name is Dean. We will catch you on the flip side. This has been a 3324 podcast quick hit. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so please make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 